Welcome back to the Keegan and Company podcast, very first episode of 2024, and I'm super excited to jump into it. If you haven't already, could I get you to jump over, give us a little like and subscribe on whatever platform you listen to this on. It's a really great way for us to grow the podcast, enhance production, have some amazing guests like I have on today. Uh, in this episode, I'm joined by one of the greats, uh, professional NRL player for the Gold Coast Titans, AJ Brimson. How are you, brother? I'm a bit shivery. I'm a bit cold off the ice bath, but I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm excited to be on. Mate, we, we had a beautiful morning this morning. We had a beautiful morning. It was... Uh... It was good for the mindset. Needed a bit of a blow. Yeah. I messaged you last night and said, look, I need a bit of cardio <laughs> in the system. It's been yeah. a big couple of weeks, but uh, no, it was good to get a little sesh out. I love doing a session, obviously with crew, like all the time, but like before we do a potty, like go out, do a session. Now we've got the ice bath out back. Like, and we had a sick, and shout out to um, Alex Glenn at Legacy for looking after us because we that place is so sick. Yeah, it's sick. I did a lot of training there in the off season. The sessions are pretty hard, but it's just, like you said, good crew. He's always open to having the boys in. So, um, yeah, no, it's a good space there. What did the off-season look like? You said you, you, did a bit of, you did a bit of training in there? Yeah, so um, for the big off-season, I was in the States for five weeks, which was sick. Uh, <laughs> spent a bit of cash and, you know, let the body blow out a little bit. But uh, it's good fun. I was there with the missus and, uh, and then met the boys over there for um, a wedding. What was your favourite part? Probably New York. New York and Nashville. Yeah. Flew, flew into New York and it was just it was sick, eh? Like, for me, like, everything, like, the movies, I thought – even seeing like the steam come up from the subway, like on yeah. the streets and the cops and all that sort of stuff. So like NYPD, and then Nashville, like, we did a lot of cool stuff like Bahamas and that, which was nice, but um, Nashville was just off its head, eh? just that one strip. You did all like the ranches as well. Like you went full country Yellowstone. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was sick. That's something I wanted to do. I wanted to uh, stay at a ranch and we actually just got lucky with um, this fella, uh, newer fella that was Aussie that lived over there. And then he knew someone who, who owned this ranch and, mm. It was free for the night, so we stayed out there in Texas and did some cool stuff and uh, did some hunting and fishing and that. That's so cool. It's hunting like a weird one because I'm so interested in like hunting and fishing, but you don't want to post any of the photos because people would just like bag you and get like, yeah. your back out. And like I'm not a hunter at all, and I'm like, you know, if I was to shoot something, I'd like feel bad. But like I was in Texas and my mate was loving it, so like we did like a little bit of hunting. But again, I'm not gonna like. You never know the crowd these days. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm not so going to post about it. I mean, no. not that there's anything like doing anything illegal or anything, but you're just like, oh, it's better. Some people could get a bit touchy. I'm for like um, hunting or fishing to eat. Like I think that's the cool – like me and Carl Lawton talk about this all the time and we, we do a bunch of fishing. It's like we'll fish – and have like a whole spread of yeah. food and then like having people over cook for it like that would be that's the coolest that's thing I, that's yeah. sick yeah 100 percent. i wish i i wish i knew how to like scale fish and do that yeah. <laughs> but come out with us he's still i think he's actually no nah, he would have gone back to training by now but i just saw he's up here he was uh yeah yeah we he did a couple we did new year's eve at his place um, we had a good little crew there, a whole bunch of like old, old footy boys. It's like, at, um, at, was it Tweed? Yeah, Tweed. Yeah, he's on the, he's on the river there. It's yeah, good spot. Beautiful. Did you ever go? Oh, were you? Were you <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> we, when, we were, when we were playing um, at the Titans together. Um, was it Australia Day? It was either Australia Day. I thought it was just before like the Chrissy break. It might have been, but we were swimming in that canal and I was a bit of head noise. Good piss up because we were at Michael Gordon's before that. Yeah, we, yeah. Did, we did like a little beach, beach session at Michael Gordon's place into I think I think Bolter put like a keg on there and then we went to Carlos's place and <laughs> two for one. And turned on in one. a commune two for one. <laughs> it's a commune. I missed that place. Oh, what a place that day. Was. Oh I tell people now I'm like, dude, you just have no idea how good that place used to yeah. be. Like anyway. Anyway, full circle. Um you're in legacy, you're doing a bit of training there, like in the off season. Is that is that prep for obviously leading into preseason? Yeah, I just um yeah, obviously went away, so um, enjoyed myself over there. Didn't get too much training done, as you tend to overseas. Uh, come back and um, was just keen as to rip in, you know, kind of had yeah. that mental break and was just keen as to rip in to get into shape. I think I'd had two, two and a half weeks off yeah. before I started preseason. So I was in there probably five mornings a week. Uh, I was playing some touch footy with Alex Glenn. I jumped in his uh, TRL team. Yes, uh, it, I was yeah. just trying to – I went and played touch up in um, Brizzy. My missus family has a touch team, so yeah. – just playing uh, a couple of games up there, just trying to stay active and that and then end up not turning up into too bad a shape in the preseason. But that would also be nice to to mix up the training and do like different types of training and even jump in like circuits with different crew. Like that must be nice, yeah. Yeah, it's sick. I love doing those circuit trainings. I think um, for me personally, like going to a gym 
and doing bench into squats into chins like for me personally i find that so boring yeah and i can't really like get up for it um doing a group thing you're in there at six you're done by 6 45 yeah. coffee swim you don't have to think you don't have to get in there you go what am i going to do today it's up on the board get a blow um it's all like a good team environment yeah. and then um in terms of touching that like you said it's different type of fitness it beats going for a run by yourself in the head noise or going to the park and doing running but you know touch is so like tough on you know yeah, it's yeah. so blowing so that was good and then like you said you mix with you know some boys and some boys you know enjoy playing because i'm down there and yeah. that and it's just yeah it's good fun I, we were having this conversation this morning like going in to a session like this morning waking up getting it done for the day and then we're done even like even this morning session like we rolled into legacy um didn't really have an idea i was like you're like let's just do cardio because you start pre-season in a couple of days yep. your, your episode will go live probably in a couple of weeks so it will be midway through the month when your episode goes live but you're like just about stuff so let's just do like a little cardio blow and it was sick like a little emom minute yeah. every minute on the minute bit of ski bit of assault bike a few bicep curls in few there babies. <laughs> a few babies, <laughs> a few babies. <laughs> I, I needed the babies but that's so but that's such a good morning like train like train coffee you boys came back we had the marshki twins come in as well we jumped in the ice bath we're still shivering a little bit but that's a beautiful way to start the yeah day. i'm a bit jittery now <laughs> yeah, but yeah like you said like i said um <clears throat> the other day i was planning on getting up and going for a run and um for me if i'm not like if i'm not like all right i'm uh, keggs is picking me up at six yeah. then i'll probably struggle to like if i'm not like all right i'm training at legacy at six or i'm going mm. for a run at 6 30 if it's not locked in mm. it's so easy to wake up and go oh bit tired i'll just like snooze the alarm so it was good to like get up this morning go f go for the session and that and like i said it's like what 30 35 minute sesh mm. tough blow but in and out and then like you said the day is yours what's the time it's like eight nine o'clock now we got the whole day just to cruise. And yeah you've done so much already and you don't feel you don't get those guilts like you know the late afternoons like oh, i've still got to do a session today like well right. like, it's just the full the full guilts oh yeah that's what i was saying before i was saying to you uh yeah the other day i went to get up slept in and i was like once you tell yourself you've got to train, mm. you kind of got to do something. And then when you sleep in and then you're waiting all day and you're like, oh, I'm, for me personally, I can't, I can't enjoy my day if I know I've got to do something. Like I'm like, I just need to get it done and yeah. I can chill. That's why like for me, training in the morning is the best. Yeah, especially if you've got like the boys, like talk about accountability. Like, like that's it. I can see you doing that after footy, just like touch, get around the boys, like legacy, yeah. like that kind of stuff would be so sick. It just puts you in the best mood. I yeah. get angry if, I, if I'm not training. You start being like, oh, I feel fat or I feel like slack or whatever. So like like I was saying before, you know, you finish a sesh and you're like, all right, what are we doing? You know, we're getting a coffee, we're hanging out. You yeah. just got energy even though you've just like used all your energy but like yeah. just creates energy. Brother, how's the whoop going? It's good. Yeah. It's actually – um, I've been wearing on my ankle a little bit so yeah. I can train in it, uh, you know, like in terms of like wrestling and that. Yeah. But I find it really interesting, um, especially like the two things I like – I just like keep me on top of my calories. I've never really done that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and even like now, like when you when you like start looking at how many calories you're burning, you start kind of being interested in what you're kind of eating in that. Yeah. So it's a good way to stay on top of that. And then for me, I use um, the sleep a lot. Yes. It's cool to see, um, you know, you kind of wake up, you know, you kind of had an average sleep and then I get like my little update and it's like, you know, more deep sleep or... And, and the coolest thing is that it'll actually give you tips on what to do. Like try and get to bed at a certain time certain or like you, or like you'll need eight hours of sleep tonight like yep. to, get, to get in the green. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Where did you hear about Whoop from? So uh, Cruz, Cruz Leeming, who came over from um, England, who yeah. was playing it. Uh, yeah, I'd never seen him until I saw him have it. And I was asking about it and he kept saying like how sick they were and that. And I was like, oh, they're mad. And then I saw you had him and I was like, Rick, that's sick. Yeah. So um and now it's kind of like a bit of a trend at training. Like everyone's kind of seeing me with it and everyone's like, I'm always like raving saying, yeah, they're sick. And then I'll like, um, you know, I'll be like, I'll finish the session and be like, frick, like spent X amount at the 90, the 100% heart rate. Yeah. X amount at 70 to 80. And then like tell them about the calories and that. And they're all like, yeah, they're pretty sick. Because some of them have those rings. Yes, the aura um, rings. But apparently they're not the best to like lift with or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm always kind of wearing this and now everyone kind of knows me. Especially when I got on my ankle, it's like yeah. a little... Yeah. Um, house arrest bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah whenever like i go to the shops i'll forget to take it like i'll forget to put it off my ankle under my wrist yeah and brooklyn's like bro you put on your wrist like you look like house arrest. but <laughs> yeah. no nah, they're sick because i was um i was looking at like what's the best like recovery tracker just for me like just for me now like with my own training and i heard whoop and the Ura rings were probably the two of the best but the thing with the Ura rings is like you can't lift with them because you'll damage the, the microchip whereas right, i love whoop because 
a, it's just like it's on your wrist. But when – and I didn't know how you would go because you got yours just before preseason started yep. at the end of last year. Um, but you could just whack it on your ankle, yep. which is so which is so sick. And, yeah. e- and even now when I'll do like when I go for a surf or if I do like some pool sessions, they've got like the hydro bands that sit over the top of it. Right. Um, so Ali Day, he, I'm pretty sure he was one of the first, first Whoop ambassadors. He did the intro with Whoop. And he, he wears that when he does ski, like swimming, and, and he measures like he measures everything. But it's so sick. Like it's such a cool recovery too. I use mine for stress as yeah, well. Yeah, you see I the see stress, stress level. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. You guys would be high stress all the time, yeah. especially in pre Yeah, yeah, especially it's like you. I'm like, <laughs> damn. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I understand. How is, um, how is preseason going? How are you feeling? It's good. It's, um, it's good on a Desi. He's, he's, uh, he's tough, but he's, he's honest. Yeah. And, um, you know, you know what you. All the boys been frothing him at the moment. Like mm. he's he's good for a spray, but he's also got like a, a really good sense of humor as well. Really, I was gonna say if there's one coach that could come in and like change, well, like just get the best out of the boys, that's probably it. Because when when we we're at the times, when I was at the times, we had like three coaches over the space mm. of like four years. I went in 2017. We had um, Neil Henry, King, yep. um, Garth Brennan, into Justin Holbrook, and now you've got. Desi in there and I feel like Desi's like full just like he's gonna if there's gonna be someone who can like get the best out of play that's probably it right yeah yeah and I think that's all we need I think um like Justin I like Justin he's a good coach but I think Desi's probably just a bit or well, he's he's a different coach and he's probably just a different like bit harder and we've yeah. got a few young boys um even boys like Tino who's obviously been in good systems like Melbourne and I think he thrives under that uh accountability you know mm. put him under pressure and Desi's got like a no name and shame sort of thing. So it doesn't matter who you are. Like yeah. he's sprayed me already, which is good. You know, yeah. like, you know, me and Phil, we're always, you know, uh, we've been together since 20s and yeah, come yeah. through together and like, you know, you got a spray, you know, it's not personal. It's quite, you know, something to laugh about afterwards. But um, in the moment, it's pretty scary. But I think it's good for the younger boys to see everyone's getting sprayed. So if, if Tino drops the ball or if a young 18 year old or a train mm-hmm. trial drops the ball, it's the same sort of thing. What do you think some of the biggest things that he's brought in that you like to see in terms of like training and that? We've always had talent. We've always just been like a nice team. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, we we don't have that real hard edge. Like, we'll we'll score thirty points, but we'll lose like thirty two thirty. Um, so, I just want to be a tough tough team and team that like teams don't want to. You know, mm. you versus Canberra and Karen, you know, you're up for like a tough gritty game. 100%. And I think that's something he's going to bring, and he's really big on. Who are the Who are the new boys that have come in that you like the like the look of, or who's been training well in the preseason? Young Keanu keeney has been training while okay. JC's out um, with his knee coming back from injury, and he's been training in the house down at the okay, moment. Right? He's, like he's a little beast. He's got a bit of like Tui Basa shake about him, you know, yeah. just real energetic and real tough carry. I'm looking forward to seeing Keenan. Obviously, a good mate of ours. Yeah, <laughs> Keenan, Keenan Palacia. Um, yeah, shout out to Keenan. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's he's come a few sessions. He's not due back to um, you know, in the new year. In a couple of days, but he's been coming in early and, and getting some con out. I didn't think I didn't think he would jump in early. Hey, like <laughs> mate, you, you should have seen. He, we uh, we were um, <clears throat> a few of us boys uh, didn't do the yo-yo test. So whoever didn't do the yo-yo trained at the end. Yeah. And there's like me, Foreign, Phil, a few younger boys, and um, Keenan. Yeah. And um, so we did the whole sesh, and then we we're finishing with con. We had three blocks and did the first block, and um, did the second block, and everyone's cooked, and we had to do the third one. And um, our trainer, Ferg's like, oh, Keenan, you know, like, this is optional for you. And he's like, nah, like, I'll rip in with the boys. Everyone's like, yeah, sweet. Yeah. We're halfway through the block. <laughs> I'm, out, boys, I'm out, boys. <laughs> out. Goes, I'd, I'd have to be here. I was like, you know, you're on the line and they ask you to see him, like, not, not come up to the line. I'm like, you're good. But, um, yeah. I mean, he didn't have to be there. So, like, he still did a massive sesh. But, um, no, nah, he's a ledge. I think it'd be good for us. Even morale-wise. He's, he's already the chirpiest in the chat. Um, obviously, we know him well and he's a good fella. So, um. I think you should bring a lot of energy. Mate, he'll be so... Because I lived with Keenan at Bronx. So we were at Bronx together. And, like, he... In terms of bringing morale and, like, like good good bands, he's he's one of the best. Yeah, Especially now, so like, funny. when he's a little bit older. Like, you remember when you first come into <clears throat> an NRL system? Me and Patty had this conversation when we did our podcast. And it's like... You don't like you don't want to say like we I didn't speak a word my very first preseason at Bronx like because mm. you got people who you look up to there's all, like all these expectations and you don't want to like drop the ball you don't want to like be an idiot in front of the boys yeah but now like Keenan and a lot and yourself like you're a little bit older like you've got a lot more confidence in yourself like you can have conversations you can get the young boys going like how did you go when you first came into grade were you you seemed pretty sweet though yeah it was 
Definitely similar though. Like I remember like Pete, who I'm good mates with now. Yeah. Like we always message and he's obviously come back soon. Nathan and we're, Pete, yeah. yeah, we're going to catch up. But he, he ain't going out of his way to say good morning to you <laughs> or hello. <laughs> so true. Like he was someone I was like intimidated of. Um, boys like Kevin Proctor and that, like they're all good dudes. But these days times are kind of changing where like I'll walk in and see the boys who are, you know, slap them up, have a laugh, whatever, because yeah. we're kind of, we're kind of like, the older boys, me, Phil, Brian Kelly and that, but we're still kind of young. Wait, well, we're young as well. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I tell them, I'm like, we had it still good compared to I've heard, like, you know, the Bronx and that sort of stuff. You chat to Kempi about, like, when he first started, he was playing in the team and they still were like, who are you sort of, you know, like, yeah. he was like a soccer player. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm always around, like, Pete like, you know, you kind of walk in and just, you know, like, looking at him, hopefully he looks at you go, hey, bro, how are you? And every now and then he'd just kind of go like that and just go to his locker and do his thing. Like, he was professional, but... um. Yeah, yeah. I think it helped having like someone like Phil yeah. and, you know, like us boys who could like kind of have our own little chats yeah. inside the thing. But, yeah, for the first couple of years, definitely not, um, you know, you're not like kind of piping up or if you drop a ball, you're like, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> damn <that was> <laughs> but also with PT, like that would – it almost just depend on what mood he's in. You know what I mean? Right. Biggest full, roller coaster it's a full, ever. It's full roller coaster. Actually, I'm looking forward because he's coming back to Palmy. He's coming back in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm keen. Um, but, yeah, he'd either be like – He'd like on the biggest high or just be like if he's in a bad mood just let him go and i know he's going to be listening to this so fuck it. yeah shout out nathan pete <laughs> we'll, <I> see. Think... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit <laughs> yeah no he's a good fella but um he was definitely someone else um kind of had to like earn it a little bit i think so mm. but i kind of like that i kind of like the fact of like having to earn your stripes and not just like walk in and so many conversations now about young guys coming in and just like I like the fact that they've got the confidence. Don't get me wrong. Like, mm. I love that. But you can't be just, like, jumping on massage first if you haven't played a game. Mate, that's – massage is a big one. Like, that's what – and, like, you see the, some boys now, they're like, oh, I'm at 4.30. I'm yeah. like, no one cares. You're, you're yeah. 17 years old. You yeah. know, you're 18 years for, old. For, for context, for those who don't know, it's usually, like, in the NRL system. Um, a lot of the teams uh, – you, you'd want to have like an earlier massage so it goes off games played. So the senior players would get the first massage, rookies would get the last massage. Order, yep. But like 4.30, that's still not a bad thing. Yeah, but like, you know, when, when we were there, when we were in 2017, 2018, obviously like me, Phil, um, you'd played some games, but like you'd be at the end and not once would you ever complain. You're just like, oh, I'm getting a massage, this is sick. Yeah. But times are slowly changing. Um, but it is good, you know, we're trying to bring back a bit of, um, because we don't have that old, senior playing group like obviously foreign's really good who the isaac old, liu who yeah who are the old boys in the in the team who'd be the senior players in the team foreign isaac liu then i think it goes like stimo brian kelly yeah and you phil and myself yeah. yeah wow but like you know tino um tino's our captain and he's he's a great leader but he's only young mm. and um so i think we're trying to this preseason has been good you know we've kind of got that confidence to you know i'm saying it's not good enough really you know not spray, but call it out on the spot because yeah. um, obviously if we had, you know, Cameron Smith or those older boys, like, but Kieran Foran is really good at it, but yeah. we're just trying to, you know, take it along the next group of like, you know, the Phils, the Moes, mm. myself, um, Tino's to to really hold that accountability. What do you think about the conversation around like people just coming to the Gold Coast to retire or people just can't like, you, you know what I mean? Like the, the Gold Coast stigma. life, the stigma around like Gold Coast lifestyle you're not going to get the best out of the playing group because the lifestyle is so good. I, for, like for me, mate, I kind of like the fact that you can go play footy, go in, rip in, train hard, like everyone wants to win, but then also the ability to get away from it and disconnect. Like what do you think around that conversation of people just coming here for the lifestyle? Do you reckon that's, do you reckon that's even a thing? I don't think so. Um, I know like where it would come from, but everyone's always like, um, <clears throat> especially they think uh, we're just, you know, you've got like, uh, some good bars on the beach and then everyone just here comes here to party and whatever. I'm like, man, we don't, we don't, we're not like a massive team that it's always going out on the drink. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we've got a lot of younger boys who just kind of go home or don't get on the drink that much. So I think everyone just thinks it's like a bit of a party lifestyle. I agree with you. Like I love getting away from footy. Mm. Everyone's different. Some boys will live and breathe it. And mm. like Tanner, if we have a loss, he'll watch the game like five times. And yeah. I'm like, I just want to, you know, take what I can to learn and then forget about it. Yeah. Um. So everyone's different, but, um 
yeah, I think the the squad that we've got at the moment, that's definitely not the case. That's probably the best thing that I look at you and you've done it forever. It's like the balance between footy and lifestyle. Like you've got it so dialed in. It's like when you're at training, you're the top beep test. Like you're one of the fittest in the team. You'll work really hard. You care. But then also getting away from footy, you love walking your dogs. You love getting in the sauna. Like you, yeah. you've got that best balance. You've always had that, yeah? Yeah. Well, I mean, I try uh, – <clears throat> I'm a big believer in like – footy is not my life yeah. at all like it's it's a big part of my life but it's not the most important thing in my life mm. like for me friends family lifestyle my dogs like that's that's what i really you know value and like you said i'll i'll rip in and i'll train hard and don't get me wrong like i'll do anything to win and, and in the game i'll put my body on the line to win but also i'll go to america for five weeks and forget that I play footy. I, I don't want to be a footy, but I don't want, you know what I mean? So yeah, like I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in like footy. I don't want to say it's a job because, you know, it's like I'm something I'm passionate about, but it's, that's the way I kind of view it. At the end of the day, it is a job. Yeah. And I've got other things in my life that are um, more important than footy. People say, um, like when I was playing, they're like, oh, like, did you, did you watch the game the other night? Did you watch this game? I was like, no, nah, I didn't watch it. Like, well, why not? Like, you don't like footy? I was like, look, I like footy. Like, don't get me wrong, I like footy, but I don't love footy. It's like, mm. I think for me, when I was saying similar to you, I was like, for me, it was kind of like a job. I was like, if you're a plumber, you're not going to go home and watch plumbing videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, watch through change pipes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's but good. You, but you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, I was like, I, if there's all, and even now, like with, um, like since finishing footy, like I'm, I'm two years out now and I'll watch mates. Like, I love watching friends. I love watching you play. I love watching the Bronx boys play, even the Storm, like, but if you said that there was a, a game on Friday night, I was like, it's probably not something I'm going to be doing. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think the older I'm getting, the more I'm kind of t- turning towards that. Um, and like I said, don't get me wrong, I'll do my video and I'll be um, professional with everything that I do and I'll put everything into a game. But for me, like, I feel like I am better the more I do get in and then get away, yeah. you know, uh, mentally switch off. Otherwise, it just, it just drags, man, it burns. And yeah. I like watching footy, but... I used to watch all seven games on the weekend, and now I'm like, oh, but sometimes I just I'd, ro- I'd rather watch a movie. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It yeah. does help sometimes watching because you, you know, Other you might players. be versing that team the next week, and mm. you can learn things and that sort of stuff, or see what's going on. But for me personally, I'm a big believer in, in but, getting away. But you're still doing video. You're just like people, like yeah, well, yeah. You say we don't watch games, but we're still doing like pre-game video. Oh like yeah, you're, like, doing, you're doing so much video. You're still looking at players who you're up against, like. Yep. That's part of the job. Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. You're going in early to do video on other opponents. Oh, you're going so. in very prepared every week, especially with Des now. We every single training, every single time we go off the field, we've got video now. Is he bringing in the iPads? You guys do yeah. iPads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've all got iPads. Um, so like, you know, having this chat, sometimes it might sound like you know we just go there and train and get away, but like it's obviously very intense. And I've heard with Des, I mean, already he's been like very detailed with everything. Yeah. Um, but apparently going to games, like you will know exactly who's kicking mm. where he's kicking mm. exactly what when they get to this post what they're going to do like don't get me wrong we'll do a lot of video in terms of that um but in terms of watching footy that's more of just like the hobby you Pleasure. know that's more yeah, of, yeah exactly yeah. it's yeah. not something you need to do yeah it's more of a oh do you watch the game last night this sort of happened but yeah for me um i'd rather be at the beach with the dogs yeah yeah yeah, yeah and palmy we're, we're, we're never oh, leaving mate. this place that we never love leave, it. Bro, we're, never we're having this conversation today it was like we're just around the corner from each other and it's like mate this is like such a beautiful place. Mate, I love it. I just, for me, like we were saying, like I love Burley, but Burley's a bit like touristy. Yeah. Like I love in Palmy. Usually if you go to a cafe, everyone that's at the cafe lives in Palmy. Yeah. You don't really go to Palmy to go to the cafe. You go to Burley or you go somewhere else. So yeah. like you said, like we went for a coffee the other morning. I just ran into you. You end up running into oh, Christmas, Christmas day. Yeah. Was it Christmas day? day it was. That. No, it was Christmas Day. It was Christmas. Christmas Day. It was Christmas Day. Just walking around and then you sit like sit down and have like a half an hour coffee. All right, I'll see you later. Yeah, That's yeah, it's sick. sick. It's the best. Um, mate, this is um, this is obviously a, a mental health and, and sport podcast. And um, I think the reason why we wanted to create this podcast was to have conversations with athletes and professionals who we all look up to. Um, I feel like if they can be seen having the conversations then it makes it okay for the rest of us right and and that's the way this whole thing started really keen to talk about hampo um it's probably been a year a bit over a year now yeah how are you feeling um at the moment is it getting easier where where's your head at, at the moment it's getting easier in terms of you know i guess everything the longer things go on the easier it'll probably get slowly mm-hmm. or 
you know, the more it's less fresh. Um, but yeah, it's a tough one. Um, I was actually over in America, you know, and it's kind of hard, like having another trip, you know, and I kind of felt bad, um, not felt bad for his family, but kind of like, you know, I guess probably like my mum would have been nervous, his, you know, just like, yeah. you know, similar thing happened last, you know, you go on a trip with the boys or your missus and you're having a great time. I was a bit rattling to be honest, um, overseas, you know, I was just with the days kind of being different than I see, you know, I knew like obviously what date it was, but you kind of start seeing the post. So that was a bit tough to be honest kind of hits home again but um me personally I'm I'm doing well but it's one of those things um I will chatting before the podcast about like you know how important it is to open up about things and for me the biggest thing that got us through it was coming back from overseas and then as soon as we got back we all went out for a big feed everyone that was over there and like right. his mates yeah. having a laugh talking about him mm. that sort of stuff and then we had um his family um friends and that at mine sort of barbecue sort of thing and like definitely helps you know just like in that group setting just mm -hmm. kind of you can kind of celebrate have a laugh and even the night um you know we found out obviously distraught rattled get a hotel room it was just me my brother and bj at the time mm. crying then like laughing you know you bring up a story and you laugh and then yeah. you kind of cry so but a year on uh, a bit more than a year on um doing all right but um obviously it's still still in the back of the head every day what was um what was the hardest part throughout that whole process do you want to give a little background on, on, on what happened just for just for those who are listening yes yeah, so obviously uh we were in europe all together uh in barcelona having a great night ripper night as you do yeah. you know in spain you know go home wake up you know there was half the boys in the room that were meant to be in there end up going out for lunch you know messaging you know, where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, no reply. Um, long story short, just Liam like fell off a, got locked out of this room, you know, went through like a fire escape in a, exit. In a club? In a club, two story or three story club maybe. Um, got locked, you know, one of those doors you can push, but you can't come through. Yeah. Locked out there and was like trying to find another way in. Um, jumps on this thing to like try to find another way around and actually end up from my um, understanding kind of went to jump over like a wall because he could see a floor on the other side. Mm. But he actually fell down an old um, garage chute, yeah. um, which was – they reckon if he was a foot to his left, foot to his right, he kind of would have hit the slab. Very, very unlucky. Oh. Um, and we had no idea. So we were all looking everywhere and obviously, you know, he was in, he was in the club the whole time. And it's one of those things, um, you know, you leave the club and half the boys have already gone home and yeah. you're kind of like, all right, Everyone's getting kicked out, right? So you, you're like, all it's right, time to go. Everyone, everyone's gone. I'm like, you know, where's Liam? Well, he must have already gone home because one of the other boys are already gone. You know, like, yeah. so yeah, obviously that happened. But the worst part of it all was just the probably 36 hours of trying to, you know, be investigators, honestly. Yeah. Um, Will was on the phone to that Walshie yeah. um, from Bronx. Yeah, XSAS. Yeah, like trying to say, like, what do we do? We went to the cop station five times. We're at the embassy running around. I had to call his mum, say, look, we can't find Liam. Um, this is what's happening. So what, she was on the phone. What did, what did she say? Like, obviously you don't know what's happened at this point. Yeah, yeah. so it was about 7 o'clock at night uh, of that day he went missing. And I was like, look, I was like to Will, I was like, bro, i got I got to call his mum. Mm. I've got to let him, her know that I don't know where Liam is. Mm. Obviously that was tough. Um, so then she straight on to, you know, Australian police trying to, which was good, trying to connect us with police over here. Um, the, the language barrier was tough. You know, you're in Spain, you're trying to, they're trying to understand. They're like, oh, you know, was he drinking? Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry. He'll be a walkabout. I'm like, nah, like Liam was easily. That's not him. The most sensible in the group. Yeah. He was easily. If anyone was going to go home with boys and go back to an apartment, like it wasn't him, you know. Mm. And if it was, he's messy in the morning or yeah. he's, he's rocking up in the morning. So at night time, I kind of was like, I kind of knew something was pretty bad, you know, just like. I was like, well, one, if his phone's dead, he would have got a cabbie, he knew where we're staying. If if he didn't, he would have messaged just being like, oh, I'm at so-and-so's house or I'm here. Mm. So then, yeah, then the next day, we're all, like, you know, we didn't really sleep because we're up at the embassy at like 1 or 2 a.m. Uh, and then just trying to find answers, you know. And everyone's trying to help, but, that, you know, we end up putting the post out. And a lot of people were like, you know, 
I used to live there. I've got friends there if you need help with the language. I was going to say, did the, did the post help? Because it I'm, helped a lot more I, than I thought. I remember like it went, obviously went viral. Like people, people are trying to like help as much as they can. Did it, did it help? Yeah. It did help. Um, it was, it actually helped more than I thought. I didn't really want to post it because I thought one, posting it kind of made it real. Mm. It made it like, and it was a bit like, I didn't want his face everywhere for his sake. You know, like it, it just kind of made it real. Like, uh, I didn't want everyone posting like, you know, like it was like a real life, not movie, but it was a real like, fuck, like this is actually happening. It made it a bit more like everyone around the world is now knowing yeah. that he's like missing and like oh, I just felt bad for him, like everyone sharing like his face, you know what I mean? Like saying like he's missing. Was it ever a point where, um, cause you know how like when a lot of boys go on trips, it's like, oh, one of the boys went missing, like because he got so blind, like did anyone thought it was a joke yeah well i mean one of the boys actually commented like um hangover four or something yeah 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 and like i couldn't get angry because like know, yeah. exactly obviously after we deleted it said sorry all this and i was like look it's sweet like i'm you know you didn't know whatever so like people thought we were joking yeah so that was pretty tough and like you know you, the worst part about that you get like kind of trolls who like message and like acting like they're helping i had this one dude say like it's pretty bad. Like message me saying, oh, I saw him leave the club. I saw him leave with this dude. You know, I think he was hitting on his, this dude's girlfriend. And yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm at the cop station showing him these messages going like. From the guy. saying, Yeah, like story. we need to find this dude. He gave me his name, his yeah. Facebook, everything. And then he messaged me saying, sorry, bro. He had some disorder. And he goes, I'm just a big fan. I just want you to reply to me. Like I made it all up. And, like, you imagine hearing that after, like, mate. 30 hours of your mate being missing. And not so far and, and not wanting to, like, kill, you know, like, yeah. I was like, then you get people like that, which doesn't help because that's just. Yeah. Easily the toughest part was calling his mum because I was the um, communicator. Like, he was, like, my best mate out of the crew. You know, I've got messaging, like, from his mum saying, like, oh, like, have you got any updates, this? And I'm literally in a room. And, like, I've, like, my old man's passed away before. I've been in a room where they get support workers in, like, I, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. And we're sitting at this station, I'm like, well, if he's fine, if he's in the hospital and he's been beaten up or whatever, we'd be with him. We're going to the hospital. We, we wouldn't be at this station. So that that was a bad, you know, me and Will just sitting there just like pretty much waiting to be told mm. something, you know, he's probably not going to be all right. You know, I can see support workers and they're all just like not really like chatting, they're kind of like chatting and looking at us. Yeah. And again, like we're in Spain, obviously like English isn't yeah. their first, so it's a bit foreign and then we go up to this uh room we've got big kind of like board meeting table officers um support workers and um translators yeah so he's saying something translators are telling us and they're telling us exactly what happened all this sort of stuff and obviously that was pretty tough to hear did you do you think it was coming so before like Definitely when we got in the room, I knew he'd passed away. Yeah. It's like, well, what are they going to tell us here? Mm. Um, especially when you see support workers. You know, if it was just the cops, maybe, oh, you know, he's bashed someone, he's in the police, he's in a lot of trouble. You know, but you see support workers and that kind of sitting around, you're a bit like, yeah, this is not going well. Mm. Meanwhile, in the back of my head, I'm like, well, I've, I've got to communicate back to his mum because I'm not letting you know them like some spanish cop call yeah, you know yeah. when i've been chatting and not not a coward but i just like was like kind of had to do it how was the conversation with her would you say oh i just kind of started the call crying yeah um which was tough obviously and she kind of just knew straight away and just kind of asked what happened and um she said um when i first called her at night the first night she's like i just kind of knew had a feeling you know something wasn't right so that was um easily you know i, I kind of make a joke but now whenever i've got to uh have a tough conversation i'm always like well i've, I've had worse <laughs> no, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. if i've got a uh i went through a breakup and, and that sort of stuff and i was like well i've had worse i've had worse conversations or if i've got to have a tough conversation with a mate or a brother or a coach or anything i'm like well i've, I've done worse you yeah. know so that's something that and it definitely kind of scars you i think um not ptsd but a bit like you know traveling with Brooklyn, mm. I'm watching her every move because I'm like, I, I don't want to have to message her mum because that's one of the worst things. So like, it does kind of rattle you a bit, but mm. I mean, like, I'm doing like obviously well, but it is something that's kind of back ahead when you go to travel again. You're a bit like, uh, like it shouldn't be in the back of your head, but yeah. it kind of is. I was gonna say, what like, 
how has it affected you going forward? Do you think it's like the travel thing? Is there anything else that you've seen in the last year that you've noticed? It's more, honestly, the having to be the communicator of, of something. Yeah. Being, uh, for me, like, traveling's a big one. But it's just, you know, you never want to have to do that phone call or be that person. But it's just literally, yeah, like, I was just thinking, like, overseas, like, if something goes wrong here, you know, it's kind of like, oh, here we go again nah. sort of thing. Yeah. Which you don't want to be thinking, but I guess the positive, it kind of makes you a bit more like on edge on what can happen. And I'm just grateful that like it was an accident, like a tragedy, but it wasn't, you know, he didn't get kidnapped. And yeah. cause like we were wigging out going, man, we're like, did we leave him and he got kidnapped cause he was lost? You know, yeah. we were like starting to feel like guilty. We're like, did we, yeah, were we just walking over a big group and he was late and was like, didn't know where to go, got kidnapped and yeah. something happened. But like, I am grateful that it was an accident that he made you know mm. so like it wasn't somebody else pushed him yeah you know yeah, yeah. In, in a way well mate thanks um thank you so much for sharing that like you're you've obviously like you opened like you're very comfortable talking not comfortable but you're, you you can talk about it now which i appreciate a lot um what were some of the things that you did when you guys got back you obviously you said you guys lent on each other like you had a little support network like who were you leaning on when you were going through that time um so when we landed we actually landed at like 10, 11 o'clock at night, we went straight to Liam's mum's house, mm. um, which was obviously quite emotional, but it was the next morning is when Australia played Scotland and they did the minute silence for Liam and that and the family loved that. Yeah. So I think, you know, I still message the mum all the time, which I was close with anyway, um, but I just think they kind of enjoyed us, the, the shit stories about Hampo overseas, you yeah. know, and like I think what gave them a lot of comfort is the amount of times he called home just saying – he was having the time of his life. Best time he was ever. he was yeah. on route to um Istanbul to get his hair transplant. Oh, was he actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. we were all going home after the bus and he was going to Istanbul and we couldn't wait just to um see selfies of him with a bald head a bald head, you know, <laughs> scalp. So um that's something we missed out on. But he was having a great time. I think just us boys being around his mum gave her comfort. It was a bit like, you know, the boys around. So and like I said, just going out for coffees and just sharing stories and and Generally, mm -hmm. talking about him, watching videos, I, I now tell um, Brooklyn she never got to meet him, but I'm just always like, oh, you would have loved him, you know? Yeah. And she's, I'm like, probably bring him up a fair bit. And she's like, nah, it's good. Like, bring him up more. And I know, like, if it happened to me, I'd want people showing yeah. funny videos yeah, of me and being yeah, like, yeah. he was a ledge. Yeah. So I just think um, talking about the fun times and, you know, there is times where, like, reality kind of kicks in. And then, like, me and Will still say, like, you just – have that reality like you can't believe he's actually gone yeah um which is obviously a right to feel like that mm. um but yeah i think just being around crew just definitely helps you and and talking about him like keeping keeping your story alive yeah. like we, we were having this conversation before off air it's like you don't ever want to get to the point where you're not talking about him because like you don't want him to be forget like he was such a huge part of your life of will's life of like all your all your friends and even like mm. we've had a few beers over the years and he was such a positive like happy dude like mate, nothing phased him hey? mate, it was it was almost frustrating the way nothing would phase him yeah um like i said we lived in with him for years and he was on the least money and he was easily the happiest so cool and like i'm not even just saying that he was like yes will um yeah he just was never in a bad mood and it was it was good to be around. It was yeah. infectious, and yeah. it was always funny, and he was always having a laugh, and nothing ever seemed to stress him. Mm. Um, you know, he's got his uh, the Hampos Youth Foundation. Talk so, to me about that. Yeah. So I'm an ambassador for that, and uh, he was big on education. He was just about to do, uh, finish his teaching degree Sick. and kind of footy and sports. So there's a sponsored athlete from Kibra Park and um, Redcliffe State High. Yeah. Obviously, he went to Kibra, played at Ready. He's doing a bit of work at Ready. Mm. Um, so they kind of picked those two schools and just kind of for like one student that kind of doesn't have to necessarily be the best player but someone who just really wants to, you know, be in their NRL, NRL or wants to learn. And the young fellow at Kibra, I think I'll be um, kind of his ambassador. It's kind of like a 24-7 like connection, like yeah. um, tips, chats, mate, sponsorship. Mate, the mentor role. Almost. Mentor role, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, pay for his schooling and boots. It's pretty cool and I think that's something that the family is really passionate about um, 
and that's another way of keeping his legacy, yeah. um, which I think is very important to them. The more, that's why I'm a big advocate for talking. I mean, I would be anyway, but the more you talk about them, the more they're still kind of around and the more they're brought up, you know, yeah. not, not forgotten. So I'm hoping in five years' time the, the youth foundation's bigger and better. Yeah. Um, but they're doing a really good thing, which is good. What, what do they want to do? Do they want to get into more schools? Do they want to – or just the same schools, just more people? I'm not exactly sure of what the five-year plan would look like. Probably um, more students. Mm. But, yeah, the, the young fella at Kira, he's uh, – I think he travels from, you know, Goodna. He's yeah. one of – you know, he train and, like yeah. – I went to the Akira Awards night to present him uh, with the award um, and it was cool. You know, I just wanted to make sure it was somebody that realised how special the award was mm. and was grateful for it. And uh, he seems alleged, you know, I didn't want someone to just be like, oh, shot G and that was yeah, it. But yeah. he seemed like really humbled and really like stoked by it. So, yeah, yeah so I'm really keen to uh, work with him. Kind of like um, this, it just sounds like all the traits that embody Tampo that have just been like passed out into like either people or, or your the people that they you want to choose the award like you want someone who kind of embodies like that kind of spirit yeah yeah exactly I think that's um I think they left it up to the uh coaches mm. who obviously knew Hampo very well to pick otherwise it'd be a bit probably hard for the parents to pick um not seeing them day to day and what they're like so I think they pick someone who they knew would really appreciate it and really would grow from the program or the foundation so seems good but you touched on um talking to mates like are you someone who is more than happy to have conversations with their with your mates or with your support network about what you're dealing with or are you type of person who would like bottle it all up like what what, what do you what do you like no i'm definitely a, a talker i think um like you said i'm i'm happy not happy but like i'm open to talking about mm. you know tragedies and things that go wrong um every now and then you know and Will's, Will's good for it too. We'll just kind of be like, Your brother, yeah, Will. yeah, I'll just be like, frick, I'm kind of rattled day. Eh? Like, I'll just be like, you know, just kind of reality is set in. Like, bro, same. Or like the one year thing. Like, mm. I was overseas with Jesse, um, with BJ, with Will, boys that were there on the one year and we'll kind of have a little cry. Yeah. You know, I, was, I had a few drinks and I was like, yeah, yeah. hit a fat wall. But like, you know, that's, for me, that's sweet. You know, like, I don't, I'm not really embarrassed by um, being emotional. People that you know mean something to you, but yeah, I'm definitely someone who I've always been pretty open to um talk to people. And for me personally, I get I know some people get a lot more out of talking to psychiatrists or mates, but for me personally, I'm pretty big on talking to mates. Mates, yes. Um, that's something that I find works well for me. And I think the club and people organised or were open to having a psychiatrist. And I was kind of like, you know, I'm not bottling it up. It's all right mm. um, because I do have a good mate group who is open to chatting about that and especially so many mates were mates with Hampo so they kind of benefit as well. You look like like the boys that you knock around with like you've just got such a good crew of friends and and obviously it expands wider to like Bronx boys people who are outside of footy but like the core group of like you guys it's like it's like you're willing to talk about things like you're you're more than happy to have those conversations you're all together like that must be so nice to have a network like that right to lean on. Yeah well I mean like when you look at it like that, it is lucky. I know not everyone would have have those that sort of network, and yeah. that's maybe why they would go towards a psychiatrist. They wouldn't have friends that they feel like they can talk to. Um, but yeah, like you said, mates at Bronx, mates at other clubs, mates at Titans, and then just like mates who don't play footy, um, who are all open and and good people. So they that we kind of helped each other through it. Yeah. And as much as they helped me, it probably helped them as well 100 and like when you're able to be vulnerable about things that are going on with you it makes it okay for someone else to come to exactly. you right like yeah, it's yeah. it's like it's so weird it like opens up this conversation opens up this like bridge for you guys to have conversations and once you've had one with someone then you can do it again and again and again i would have no shame in randomly be like frick i miss hampo to one of the boys and yeah. they're like yeah and then you end up just having a laugh about him and talking about it. it's better than just in your head going frick i miss him and then just like feeling down about it because yeah. you end up then talking about it then you end up you know, just bringing his name up, having laughs and kind yeah. of just gets you through it. What um, what are some other things that you do for your mental mental fitness? Is there any things that, that stands out that you're conscious of that you do or things that maybe you're not probably conscious of? I think, like I was saying before, a bit of balance with footy. I think footy can get a bit, you know, full on yeah. um, pressure-wise and that. So that's why I always try to prioritise family and friends first because mm. if footy's gone good or bad, Regardless, if you've got a good life outside footy in terms of family, friends, going to the beach, enjoying where you live, enjoying mm -hmm. what you do, 
uh, a bad game isn't isn't really that bad, yeah. you know, when, in the scheme of things. And that's why I try to look at things, you know, if you have a bad game, obviously you don't want to have a bad game, but it's not the be all and end all. You get to come home and a dog's still wagging a tail when you come in. That's going to give you, you so punt. much love, yeah. <laughs> Mate, literally, like, she she didn't have, she never watches the footy. She doesn't really understand it. So, <laughs> so <it's, laughs> she'll still love me. If she I loves me, mate. If I drop the ball three times, she's like, "You're right, Dad." So, yeah. um, just little things like that, I think, uh, help me. And that's my priority first is, uh, you know, being happy outside footy, and that'll, you know, help me on footy. Beautiful, bro. Um, life after footy. What's what are you thinking? We were talking a little bit before. What what's um what's coming up that you're excited for, mate? I'm uh, I'm interested in. In business, I never thought I would be. Um, I've actually got a bit of a passion on doing a business, and I've I've always it's been like a, a bucket list for me. I wanna I wanna have a business, and I wanna interview people for the job. You know, you always yeah, talk about okay, like like job that. interviews, and yeah, I've yeah. I've always wanted to sit there uh, and just. Oh, so, what are your qualities? You know, cause <laughs> what, <laughs> what can you bring? What's to the your five year plan? <laughs> Literally, and just like because I, I've never I've never done anything like that. Yeah. Um, I love real estate. Um, so hopefully uh, by the time I retire, I've got a um, got a beautiful Airbnb in Burley, mate. That's just popping off, and and even that, mate, I'm I'm loving it. So I just put it up for um, check out the Instagram Froth on the Rocks. Froth uh, on the Rocks, what a name! I love that name. Of shout it. out Froth Donk for <laughs> the Froth Donk. Yeah. Get, get me a little. Bit oh there. really? Yeah. I mean, I just love his Instagram. So yeah. um, but yeah, it's it's at Burley Hill there, and um, so we we registered uh, maybe the 28th, and uh, I was getting messages, you know, trying to get it for the 29th to the second. Yeah. Or maybe it was the thirtieth to the second, whatever it was, and um, you know I was communicating on the Airbnb app, and I'd never done it. It's had um, Concrete Cans has worked under all year, so I've been out of Airbnb yet. And even that, you know, I've got this, I've got this lady messaging me, and she's like, um, "What time's check in?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's usually three. I mean, I've never done one. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, it's three o'clock. Act professional." She's like, "Can I get an early one?" I was like, "Look, you can request one. I'll see what we can do." But like, <laughs> <laughs> knowing damn well she could have an early one. <laughs> <laughs> and I get back to her an hour later. I was like, she's like, can we do our one o'clock? I was like, yeah, one's fine. Uh, and then today she's checking out. She's like, oh, it's meant to be 11. She's like, can we check it out at 12? I was like, yeah, no worries. You yeah. know, just <laughs> You're playing the part. Little, little business You're fully thing. playing so, the part. Uh, I don't know. Life after footy, I want to try uh, work now and set myself up as much as I can. So I'm not relying on a one nine to five. I'd love yeah. to have a few things. I'd love to work at the club. Hopefully I can stay at the Titans and I can do a little bit. You know, not full time, maybe three days a week, help out with the back five uh, or whatever role it might be. Hopefully some sort of a business and hopefully some Airbnbs are doing all right. It's so cool that you're conscious of that now when you're in like the peak prime of your career because there'll be so many guys like when we've seen it who have gone through like they're not, not that they're not conscious of it, but they're just not doing anything. Mm. It's just like footy's it. And I think like if you're happy outside of footy, you're going to be playing better footy exactly. in, in, like in when you're actually playing and, and, and setting yourself up. So when you get to the time where you know, it might be time to retire or you might get retired early, you mm. know, like. Yeah, yeah, you never know what could happen. You never know what can happen. And to have an idea of like what you want to do so huge or even understanding what you don't want to do yep. because once you figure it out, it's like, oh, actually, I don't want to do that. Like, yeah. When I was at the Titans, um, I tried so many things. Hey, like we did um, – do you remember when we did the work week? Um, and, you, <laughs> and, like, and Pete was <laughs> Bricky's Labourer? <laughs> Nathan Pete was on Bricky's Labourers. I think Rainey, um, he was like concreting or doing something. Boy, like people were doing steel work. You had the dream. You had Trooper Deal in Mate, Byron. I was Trooper Deal in Byron in the aircon because I had um, – Oh, yeah. It must have just been after my shoulder surgery or something. I mean like it wasn't just after but I, I was still in rehab so yeah. they couldn't really – do too much and mate it was the best ever yeah it was sick i was coming in fresh <laughs> ass going out for lunch and the boys just coming with blisters on their hands <laughs> so good but like even like i was on um surf city cranes like shout out surf city cranes like those guys were those guys were legends like we got to understand like um rigging and setting up cranes and going out and i was like this could actually be something that i want to do after mm. footy and um obviously like it's not probably not something that i want to do like really cool to understand like i'm similar to you i like the way business runs and business works but understanding it from their point of view and then even going into like coffee shops and restaurants like i hit up alex labart and went into labart um restaurant and did yeah, like yeah. their prep day it's just like, yeah, I, cool. like maybe i want to run a restaurant one day like you never know but um understanding what you don't want to do because then when you finish footy you're like oh actually like there's these are things that i don't want to do but there might be a few things that i yeah. want to do that could help when you finish up. Yeah, it makes the um, transition a lot easier. Before we wrap things up, is there anything else that you'd like to touch on before before we finish up? No, I think it's been good. I think um, 
the podcast is doing good things and, and I'm a big believer, like I said, in in opening up with my mates. I've got no shame in, in having a laugh or having a cry um, with the mates and talking about things because personally it helps me get through things and it keeps, um, you know, names alive mm. and things like that. So, um, but no, nah, that's that's it for me. Um, it's been a good morning. Brother, it's been a great morning. Um, I appreciate you so much for, for not only training this morning in the ice bath, but coming on and, and being open and being vulnerable. Um, I've got a lot of love for you, mate. I, I, I'm really excited for not only your career in 2024, but also life after footy. I think you're going to kill it. Um, you've got a lot of love for your mates and... And I think you're going to good. Yeah, I think you're going to do good things. So thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, bro. It's been good. Yes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on, bro. You're the best. You're the best. Thank you, mate.